what's been going on in social media world, man? What, what, what's been going on there? <laughs> hey, you know, I stay away from social media now. That world is crazy. They, everything done backfired on everybody. So I, I come in every once in a while. I see certain things. I get a good laugh, and then I get up out of there. Well, we came across a young we we came across a young lady in a in a Facebook group. Uh, shout out to the She Trucking Trucking group. Uh, she came in there and um, she dropped it some uh, interesting tidbits on a uh, on another popular social media uh, guru of sorts. Um, I I know you read it. I read it. it. It was a very long post, but pretty much it says that she was scammed. Well, scam is a harsh word. It's her words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allegedly, allegedly, she was scammed out of fifteen thousand dollars for what is called a truck biz in a box. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm I don't know what this is. I mean, I I I I don't understand truck biz in a box. Like what? You you pay fifteen hundred dollars or fifteen thousand dollars. And a box comes to your house. A box comes to your house. And it has all the trucking information in there. You know, it's like clothes in a box. You know how you order? Your, they got these uh, websites where they send you clothes and they put the outfit together for you. <laughs> That's pretty much what the trucking biz in a box is. Let me get this straight. If I if I pay Charmaine Jeffers because that's who's offering it, fifteen uh, k, I I will automatically get a a, a trucking business hand packed. Ready to go for me. No CDL, no knowledge of trucking. Just no give nothing. just just give just up 15. Up yeah, just just give up 15k. Show up, sign my name, and I will automatically have a business, a trucking business, right? Within 60, within anywhere from 60 to uh 120 days, roughly, you know, because they're backed up. You know, it's so popular, they're backed up. Wait, wait, wait. You mean to tell me a lot? Uh, you mean to tell me a lot of people is is buying a truck business in a box? How much? Well, how much you well, is, how, how much you speculate? How much you speculate? This young lady, lady conjured up. She has different levels. She has different levels. She has the platinum. She has the gold, the silver. And then she has the, these phases. And so uh, evidently, uh, the platinum cost is like $60,000 down payment. Mm. And she takes you to the uh, dealership that she's been dealing with for five years. And you pick out your truck at the dealership yourself personally. You know, and that's the $60,000. And she, she's your... Uh, grade A one co-signer that day. So, in no. other words, what we're paying for is we, we're we're paying to use her, uh, her credit? credit. Her credit. Yeah, she's she's gonna get you to pay off all her credit and keep her credit outstanding because the moment anything goes wrong or it sounds like it's gonna go wrong, she has you by the signature. And the fine print that, uh, unfortunately, this young lady, I guess, Don't failed read. to read was that it was no refund. But you ain't see the job, Frank? Mm -hmm. I think you wore right past it. The money job, Frank. What, what I got to do, put a fucking sign on it? With no refund. No refunds. No, definitely. See, and that's another thing that our people do very well they don't read they don't read anything they say and, and it's funny because they're manipulated to sign a contract by the person pointing here sign here they don't say well let me give you a few minutes read over it and uh 
I'll, I'll be back. And when you finish reading over it, then, you know, we'll discuss it before you sign it. No, no. They take their figure and they point to where they want you to sign. And unintelligently, most people sign right there. Even on traffic tickets, a cop would say, here, sign right here. No, I'm not signing nothing. I'm not signing anything. And if you do sign something, just put a uh, C council. And that way you are not going to get locked into something because now you can take that same contract to your attorney's office and let them read over it because there's wordplay. And as long as there's wordplay, you got to have an attorney. I'm sorry. It, this seems as though it's, it's like a too good to be true type deal. Like, you know, the yeah, young dude. lady thought that, hey, I, I will just pay $15,000 to uh, a lady that's real popular, you know, she, she, I've never heard of her. <laughs> uh, well, she's, she's popular on, on the social media fronts, Facebook, in particular, Facebook, you know, uh, oh, so, um, D- outside, D- outside of face, outside of Facebook, uh, I, I would say she's, you know she's known but inside of facebook yeah er- everybody knows her to be uh this uh trucking lady trucking boss you know boss of all bosses I've never heard of her. yeah I- i've never heard of her. i've never heard of any of these people i've never heard of these facebook groups and unless somebody tells me about them i've never heard of them and i've been doing facebook since facebook was invented when in college because when facebook started it was only for college students and uh i've never heard of these trucking people ever shout out to the she trucking trucking group one of the largest uh female wow. trucking groups out there uh charmaine jeffers she has a uh, cdl for life uh i would say she's like the second largest uh uh trucking uh trucking group out there so but you know, you know, Char- well, Charmaine, you know, she came in a couple of uh, controversies before. This this isn't the first time uh, her name was brought out in in uh, a situation. But let's continue. Oh, okay. Let's let's continue with this one though. Uh, okay. So uh, this was what twenty twenty one, where in Char in Charmaine's words, the market was good. You know where everybody jumped into it. Let's let's hear what she had to say about that. Oh, hold on. Hold on. And some of our investors are on this live right now. But let's state the facts. The facts are when we started Truck Biz in a Box in 2021, the market had not gone down yet. And so the potential earning revenue was about $2,000 a week after all expenses because the market was still pretty good when we started truck biz in the box and it was an absolutely awesome awesome venture okay um so the facts we had one dealership that we've been dealing with for over five years my man 20 percent So in her own words, back in 2021, the the market was great. The venture was great. But of course, this is 2023, you know, uh, you know, post pandemic. Uh, the rates has went down tremendously. Uh, fuel has has risen tremendously. And for this young lady, you know, by by 2022, she still haven't received anything, uh, according to her. Uh, she was still waiting for the truck. She was, or or the package, I guess. Um, and by 2022 or 2023, it, it just came to the point that she just felt that she wasted her money, $15,000, and she went back Wait. to Char- she went back to Charmaine allegedly, yeah. 
allegedly, she went back to Charmaine and said, hey, uh, I, I've been waiting for close to, what, two years? You know, 21, 22, 23, so two years, and I I, I got nothing to show for it. So uh, can I can I at least get my money back or yeah. or part of my money back? Uh, something. And, something. Yes, yeah, something. And of <laughs> course, of course, like everybody does, well, the fine print says it was no, no. refunds. Well, my question is, if this business was doing so well in 21, all right, why did it take so long for this young lady to hear back from Truck Biz in a Box? Where, where was the updates? Uh, why, is it, why does it take so long to get a truck? There's trucks parked everywhere in every damn state for sale. So if this is a business of buying trucks and setting you up in a business, what was taking on this dealership so long to get a truck? And she didn't have the, uh, according to what I read, she didn't have the platinum or the gold. or the, So she had the minimum joy. So if she was supposed to get a truck that was anywhere from 215 down. And they, they're everywhere. So what took her so long to get this girl a truck? Good question. And I, I I don't know if if Charmaine uh responded to that because a lot she she did a live feed. That's what that clip was from. Uh it yeah, was a, it was a two hour it was a it was close to two hours of her responding Rat. to this young lady. No, it, was two, it, was, it was close to two hours of her constantly repeating the same thing that she opened up with. She was trying to uh belittle the the client and make herself look good with attorney words. And she just kept repeating herself over and over. I, I got to the point. I kept fast forward and fast forward. And every time I clipped to a fast forward, she was back to what she said in the beginning. If this young lady, that's the client has a good attorney. They're going to drag her. They're going to drag this truck biz in a box and get this girl, her money and some extra money. Because there's no way that it took close to two years to get this person a truck. Because come to the end of 21, December 26th of 21, the market crashed the day after what we call peak season. Okay? The day after what we call peak season, December 26th is the, the day after peak season. The, the market had done, took a dump like it had diarrhea instantly. If you knew the market was crashing and you saw the, the, the rates dropping and you saw fuel starting to edge up, we all watched it because according to the pandemic, we were working and the fuel was at a great price and everybody was what they call essential. Come 21, towards the end, or well, at the end in December, it took a major dump. So why didn't you notify your clients and say, hey, right now things ain't looking so good. Here's a refund or here's half of your refund. Or do you want us to hold on to this and continue moving forward? Was there a conversation of this such? If you're such a professional, why didn't you reach out to your people and say, hey, we noticing what's going on with the marketing and uh people are turning in trucks you know they're not buying them they're turning them in <clears throat> so how should we move forward with chores do you want to continue this or do you want to back out the lady didn't give this young lady that option it was give me my money you're locked in there's no refunds there's nothing to talk about and that's all you constantly if you listen to what she's saying that's pretty much what she's saying to this lady so me personally, that's bad business. That's bad business. You, you, you know, there's an old phrase grandma say, God don't like ugly. And when this lady, what's her name, Jefferson or whatever you say her name Char is? Charmaine Jeffers. Yeah. When, her, when, when karma comes for her, while she's sitting in karma cafe, there's no menu there. You get what you're served. When her world come crashing down, 
I wonder how big it's going to get on social media. Or will she tuck her tail and hide under a rock? Because when you do people wrong like that, wrong is coming back for you because the sister to wrong is wrong. And remember, it comes back, what goes around comes around, whether it's good or bad. If you do good, good comes back around. If you do bad, bad comes back around. And to me personally, this is my own personal opinion. You're not responsible for anything I say, never. But me personally, I, let me get that out there for you. I'll put my own closet for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the lockout is not responsible for anything that DSX speaks upon. But my own personal opinion, when wrong comes for this lady, it's going to come and it's going to crack her ass. Because you don't do people like that, especially people that don't know no better. Remember, people jumped in this game because of social media. I keep telling you this. This trucking thing went to shit. It killed our lifestyle. It killed everything that we ever built in this country for over 100 years. Trucking is 107 years old this year. Okay? And it took social media five years to destroy a 100-year business. Why? Because people came in here hustling. And they hustled not knowing hustlers. See, when you're not a hustler, and you are, you, you are a gopher, and you go for anything that's told to you, you get got. These people came in here, and they pretended they knew this trucking industry, and the only thing they could do was sell you a bunch of conversation with no backup, no proofs of the industry whatsoever. And it took effect on people like me and the rest of the owner-operator world. Okay? The things that my father and grandfather built has has been a mockery. Now, there's there's if you're not known in the trucking world, you're not going to be known. You're not coming in from social media and all of a sudden, uh, Proc and Gamble, they know you. They uh, uh, you start naming companies, Coca Cola, Pepsi. You know, you just start naming companies that own operators. We pull for. They're not going to know you. So. You're coming in from social media. You bought this package off of social media. You paid somebody else's lifestyle. And now you don't hear from these people. There's plenty we could name that I won't. I don't want nobody trying to sue me. I have to drag them. But where they at? Where's all these people that popped up during the pandemic making millions, talking about trucking was a billion, a billion dollar industry, which it is. But they came in, got their couple of million dollars, if they made millions, from people who don't know no better. This young lady didn't know no better. She didn't have no CDL. She, had no, she just went with social media said. She jumped on the wave, but she found out that she jumped on the wrong wave. Her wave had broke already. So she just got washed. She got washed ashore. And now she's stranded on Gilligan's Island. Well, you you are absolutely right, D. Uh, social media has changed the face of trucking for for at least the last five years. A lot of these, uh, you know, a lot of these impressionable people jumped in because of social media. They they saw this social media so called influencer over here selling, you know, selling dreams, you know just 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 come on and be a uh not just a truck driver but just be a part of trucking with nothing but a computer the internet and a calculator you know they yep. you you could you you know they selling them instant you know becoming instant millionaires you got you got females on podcasts i forgot her name but she uh, She's over here talking about I don't have a CDL and I got a multi-million dollar trucking business and this, that, and the third. I'm not, and I'm not saying, hey, that's great. I'm all for it. That is great, but I, I don't think you did that by yourself. You know, 
they sitting there saying it's all me, me, me. I did this, I did this with no help, and yada, yada, yada. Uh, I, I hear you. You won't have to come back. There will be no problem. What about you, Frank? You need anything? Where's my money? Red Top gave me the package. He's supposed to hand me my money. Here's a jar right here. 20%. Oh, you got the jar? That's right. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, Frank. Oh. I've come to terms with understanding this social media thing, and I walked away from it. Remember when I came on, well, when I made myself public, I was already on. When I made myself to the public, I came on to tell the truth because the truth wasn't being told. And then I got all the backlash because what people don't want to hear is the truth. They want to hear gossip, garbage, and how I could be a millionaire. And as, if I would have sold them the trucking information on how to become successful in trucking, it wouldn't have had the word millionaire in it, so they wouldn't have bought it from me. You understand? When you talking about the word millionaire and trucking, you you got to look at it in the aspect of if you don't have a hundred trucks and two thousand trailers, a person like me is not listening to you. But a, if you tell somebody, "Oh, I got sixty trucks," and then when we do the research, you don't have sixty trucks. You have an MC number that lists one truck, but you signed on. All these new people coming in yesterday, because remember the FMCSHA, they 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 publish every day who comes on, and they show you every day who goes out. So when new trucks come in, your number is public, so people call you. Hey, you you, you got a truck? I, I I'm a dispatcher. I'm a broker. I'm a this. I'm a that, and I can help you. And they don't know no better, so they sign on with these people. So, yeah, you got 60 drivers with a truck. And if it was that good, how come the market is crashing? The market crashed because we're over flooded and oversaturated with non professionals. And we getting oversaturated with immigrants as well. Not only do we have the uneducated, we have undocumented coming into this industry flooding the industry and now the work is not equaling the people that we have so you got a pie of eight slices you got 40 people at the table how are you going to feed the ball you just constantly keep cutting the slice and that pie went from eight slices to feed eight people or maybe feed four people two slices each to feeding 40 people you Think, do the math. It's it's all math. It's all percentage. You keep cutting and keep cutting and keep cutting and keep cutting until everybody got a crumb. And then did you did you die? No. Did you starve? No. Why? Because you had something. You ate something. Are you eating comfortable? No. But you're eating just enough to say I have a trucking business. In the meanwhile. Their business is crashing. So the people up above, the powers to be, said, you know what? We got to get rid of these people. The government has nothing to do with fuel. Let's get that straight. Fuel is sold from private fuel owners. You know, back in the day, we used to watch uh, Dallas. and J.R. Ewan was the biggest oil person. That's still the same thing in reality. The fuel companies raise their prices with each other. They sit down and say, hey, let's, let's get our money. They raise the price. It has nothing to do with the president. It has nothing to do with the government. That's private. People keep blaming the president for the fuel, but the president has nothing to do with fuel. So they raise the fuel, and at the same time, the market of the people with product said, I'm not going to pay this price. I want my price lower. So now you got brokers who popped up out of nowhere. And now they're competing. So they have to cut each other's throats. And that pie, again, that was eight slices, have got chopped up to damn near nothing for each people to get a little crumb with all these 
uh, uh, brokers. So fuel went up, price went down. There's no way you're going to survive. So that's a crash. Now you got 300, well, over, it was over uh, uh, something like, if I remember correctly, don't quote me on this, but it was something like 5 million new drivers came in between the pandemic and 2022. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people, bro. Okay. And out of that, out of that wave, a hundred thousand were women. And they started talking like they was running the industry. <laughs> and if you notice, majority of the scammers that became such gurus are women. Hold on. But you can't just jump out there and get a truck. You can lose your ass. A lot of people are following people on the internet who bought somebody course who swear they a guru and they not. And they ain't teaching these niggas want to get a truck and they should just sit. If you dispatch first, like you actually learn the industry. You learn how to get the bag. But that also teaches you, hey, I want to get this type of truck because this owner don't have these type of problems like the international owner does. You also are building relationships with shippers. So they start to f with you. But if they f with you, that's all you need right there. So now that I know I want to get this type of truck, I got this relationship with the shipper. I'm making money dispatching because you get 10, 15%. That's how you maneuver that. And now, this is. Uh, that's a, that's th a, hold, on, hold on. That sounds like my social media daughter, Kiera. Mm hmm. The trucking guru. Yeah, now, nah, I know. She's official tissue. She's official tissue. Why? Because she's part of me. <laughs> now, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these uh, truck drivers uh, that came in, uh, you know, a lot of them again was talked in through social media. You know, come out here, get the bag, and all like that. But a lot, uh, a few of them was talked in uh, just to jump right into owner operations. I, you know, I. <laughs> I've seen uh, through some people on Instagram that you don't even have to have a, a CDL, uh, you know, to own a trucking company. You can go to Penske. You can go to Penske, get a get a truck from Penske, and then lease, put it, the, out. lease it out to the person that uh, that do have a CDL. You can lease it out to them. You can lease it out to them. And they you're letting your credit build you money. That's all you're doing. You're letting your good credit build you a percentage of somebody else's slavery. See what what's going on. I'll say what you can't say. Okay, what's going on is reverse slavery amongst the workers. Okay, this, this so is a wait, phrase. Wait, 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 wait. Let me ask you this: Do you think do you you know by by people going to Penske and and people like Charmaine Jeffers? uh being uh 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 having a partnership with a with a trucking company that that's how she's getting over on over over on these unaware uneducated yes you know I, I i will definitely say yes she is a person who's taken advantage of the unknowing for the uh, the people when i say unknowing i'm talking about the people who don't know no better she's taken advantage of the but the people who don't know, if you don't know, and like I said, the word million dollars catches everybody that don't know. You're tricking the baby with candy. And come to find out the candy is Benadryl or Malatola and you're, you're putting these people to sleep and they don't know no better. And you're constantly going to keep making your money off their percentages. So if they don't make no money, guess what? She's not going to make no money. If they all decide to say, fuck this, oh, sorry. If they say, I'm not doing this, and they all stop, she can't make no money. Now she goes in default and debt. Now, if they want to get her back, all they got to do is go stop working. Where's she going to get her money from? She's going to have to spend the money that she took from them to fight them. And it's going to, and they could tie her up in litigations and courts for years if they choose to. Now, you did mention the fact that uh, that she, well, 
I think she said she she said it in the in in her live feed that she have different tiers, different stages. And you mentioned the fact that uh, you know why she didn't tell the young lady, hey, the market is changing. You know, do you still want to continue with this juncture? Do you think that she told that she might have told uh, the people that you know that 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 was in the platinum status? Did you really find a million dollars in the trunk of a car and, and, and turn it in? Did you yeah. do that? You did yeah. that for real, huh? My man. Good for you. If you listen to that interview, no, I don't. I didn't hear nowhere in there she says she reached out to any of them and gave them a heads up. I don't. I don't have the the uh, time to sit and listen. But if you listen to it while you're driving, if you hear that, you let me know. But I don't believe that lady had that type of integrity or decency to do it because she's only talking about how the contract was signed me personally this is again me personally i don't believe she had that type of integrity in her to let them know that this was going to happen and they may lose or they may not lose she didn't she didn't help them she just held on to them binding a contract everything that she talks about is a binding contract that they signed unknowingly because they didn't read the fine print they probably didn't even read the bold print. They just signed it and kept it moving. Got a truck in a box. They got a business in a box. The box showed up with a pair of slacks, a blouse, a tie. And, and that a, is the <laughs> business. So. Business in a box. I, 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 I. Trucking business I mean, in a box. Uh, guys, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I may not know about, know about know about anything but i know if i need to know about something i know who to call my man d right here i you know that that truck business in the box man I, it don't make no sense to me why 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 would i pay you fifteen thousand dollars the same fifteen thousand dollars i think i could take to a a, a dealership and put down on my own truck and and try and and try to build my business that way. Why I'm looking like giving you fifteen thousand uh, dollars to build your business? I think that's what I'm doing with my money, right? That's what you're doing. You're building her brand. That's why you said she's the number two largest platform on on Facebook. Why? Because her followers are the people who's paid into her. Majority of her followers is paid into her lifestyle. That's why they're starving and she's living. Because they they look at it like this. Oh, man, I got to run this load because if I don't run this load, I can't make my truck payments. I got to be able to make my truck payments so I can keep going to make my truck payments. If I don't make my truck payments, I oh, man, I can't feed my family, but I got to feed her first. Damn, I can't even take my kids to the park this week because I'm not going to have enough money because I got to make sure she gets her money because she's getting her percentage off the top. Let's not forget that. She's probably getting her percentage before the dealership gets theirs for their payment. She probably has it worded where the money comes to her and then she sends it back to you. She'll take what she wants and needs and send you the rest back. Or she has it in good faith where you have to send her her percentage. So Let's use the percentage. If you made a dollar and she's getting 25%, you got to send her a quarter right off the top. Now you got to pay the dealership their 25%, whatever the truck costs. Now you got insurance. If it's all not one package, now you got all these other things. The fuel, <laughs> fuel's going to take that back end of 45 to 50, uh, 45%. What did it leave you with? 3%? 6%? of that dollar that you started with? How does that make sense? I, I hope everything, you know, works out for uh, for this young lady. Her name is uh, Tezza. Te Tezza. Tezza. If I'm, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, I'm sorry. I always beat people's names up. But I, I do hope everything work out for her. Uh, she did say, you know, at the bottom of the post, 
that uh, she wants her hard-earned investment back. I I, I don't blame you. That, you know, $15,000 is a lot of money. Uh, she wants an extra $1,500 for the lawyer that she had to get. Uh, she's She wants uh, lost wages. Uh, she She's going after false hopes and dreams and promises. Uh, the lost wages for a lockout, I don't think she's going to get because she don't know what the wages would have been or what it was because she never did it. The best she can go for is just getting her deposit back and and walk away. If her lawyer is going to do anything, the best she can get is her deposit back and maybe a compensation for a couple of dollars after that. But all the things that she's listing, I'm, I'm not going to say she's going to be able to get. If she does, uh, I'm going to God was looking out for her. D, but do you do you think this is a teachable moment? For those that is paying attention, yes. For the students in the class that's watching and watching and listening, yes. But for the ones that's like, oh man, this is somebody else just, you know, because she ain't making now, everybody else ain't going to make now. Nah. You got a lot of that too. Don't forget, they call those haters. That's the, the word that came out that was such a big word during the plan. Oh, you just hating. No, I'm trying to save you. I'm not hating by telling you the truth. So, yes, it's a teachable moment for those that are listening. But those that don't have ears to hear, they're never going to hear what's going on. And those that have eyes to see are going to be blind to the fact that this is taking place. You can look at the other guy down in Atlanta, a few of them, who blew up, but you don't hear about them now. They blew up so big, they off the radar. Why? Because they got ghosted. When the market crashed, they got ghost. This lady is still out there. The face, most of the women are still faces because they want to be seen. Think about it. You said it once before that women are the the the, the biggest promoters. Why why do you do you still feel that way? Yeah. Think about it. A woman could suck a man to do anything just on her looks. She's going to get her $40 no matter what. <laughs> you say she's still going to no get it, still you, going to get that 40. She's going to get her $40 no matter how you slice it or dice it, bro. If she appeals to you, you don't hear nothing she's saying. She sounds like the teacher from Charlie Brown. You don't hear it. You just go with the flow and you send her your $40 and never get a chance to smell the rose that she played with. Think about it. That, that rose hit the market. They was out there buying that rose. Now all of a sudden, now the rose don't work no more. But the men is going to follow a woman. If you go into a restaurant, and the waitress is a good looking waitress or very nicely, you know, put together the way you like it, you're gonna tip her well just on her. If she's a little different from what you like, you're either not gonna tip her or you're gonna tip her less than what she deserves for the work that she put in bringing the hot plate to your table. So, no matter how you look at it, women are gonna get their $40. That's what's up. That is what's up, man. Uh, again, uh, shout out to uh, the She Trucking Trucking Group, where you know where we got this post from. Uh, shout out to Tezza. Hope hopefully everything works out for her. And uh, and again, you know, like I said, it's all allegedly what's going on between Tezza and uh, Charmaine Jeffers. Uh, Tezza did mention that you know the contract states that her truck biz in the box would start making revenue within five months of the date. That was back in twenty. <laughs> that was back in twenty twenty one. We're here in twenty twenty three, and we don't see nothing yet. So, uh, you know, from me and uh, DSX, we we hope that uh, everything works out for you. You know. But this this yes. goes to show 
this right here goes to show, you know, if it sounds too good to be true, then nine times out of ten it is. Yep. If, if ten people say you're a horse, go ahead and get that saddle. This lady is le legitimately telling you she's using her credit to get you to pay her lifestyle. And if you think about it, when the pandemic hit, that's all people kept talking about was, you know, I'll I'll sell you my credit. You could use me as a, 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 I'll put you on my cards, but I'm not sending you no card. Come on now, you've heard these things. They have people actually saying, all right, I'll put you down on my, my credit card just to help you build your credit, but it's going to cost you. I know you don't want to give up no cops. What you want? You want gangsters? Pick one. Jew gangsters, Mick gangsters, guineas. They've been bleeding Harlem dry since they got off the boat, Richie. I don't give a fuck about no crime figures. You can have them. I'll take them too. Right. That's how, that's how, that, that's how me and my son figured it out. Like, I, I was using, like, you know, I my son got a credit card and he put me on as, like, an mm -hmm. authorized user. But in the, back, in the background, it was really building my credit. I didn't know that. Yeah, you're built, as an authorized user, you're building your credit. But if that bill doesn't get paid, it affects both of you. So if you, if you are on the card, your credit's going up. Every time that payment's on time, your credit goes up. Every month, you get a credit score. So that's what they're doing with their credit. They get these, If they have a, a, a 780 or better, and they got, let's say, just use a small number like 10 people who's sending their money in on time. If eight send their money in on time, the bill is still being paid. The two that didn't send their money in, they're the slackers. But the money is still enough that they're paying the bill. So their credit is still going up. Now you got to address the two slackers and let them know, hey, I'm going to have to take you off. But once they take you off, your credit will drop tremendously. Just by taking them off? Just by taking them off. You lose, you lose tremendously. They call, they call that a closed account. And once you have a closed account on your credit, it makes it kind of like a default to everybody else. They go, oh, oh, you closed an account. Why you close your account? Now you got to tell them, well, I was on somebody else's and they took me off. Now that doesn't, now you, you open up other doors, other pathways to information that needs not to be known. But once somebody takes you off their credit or you get a closed account, your credit drops crazy, bro. You went from a 740 to a maybe a 620, if not a 580, overnight. It's, overnight. In your opinion, do you think credit score uh, really matters? Because I, 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 I had a friend that had like a, a 730 credit score, but he had a, you know, he still had a bankruptcy uh, that was on his report from maybe about two, three years ago, I guess. Uh, maybe close to five. I don't know. I think it's supposed to be on there for like seven years, but five years ago. But everything else is all right. You know, you say he pays bills on time. Uh, he, he, he only have like a few uh, hard uh hard looks at his credit but do you you know but when he try to apply for uh a bank card you know he like i said he had a seven he had like a 730 750 credit score which was which okay. is supposed to be like great excellent. you excellent. know yeah, it's supposed to be yeah. excellent but they still denied him a credit card though because he didn't meet the requirements between the three creditors. You got to remember, it's all a scam. The creditors are a scam. There's no such thing as the stuff that they got you believing in credit. All right? They're all scamming, and they keep a public uh, record of your spending habits. And all you need is one bad thing on your spending habits, and then it throws up what they call a red flag for everybody else to say no. Now, no matter how you look at it, 
Cash is king still to this day. All right. Even though it's a debt note. But let me tell you something, brother. You could buy more with a bar of gold and a pound of silver than you can with the almighty American dollar. Now, if you invest yourself in the buying a gold bar, I think a gold bar, uh, uh, I forget the ounces on it, costs you about $500, but it's worth 1000 Invest in the things that America, not United States of America, America is run off of. Other countries are run off of gold and silver. Remember, the gold and silver runs the world, not the American dollar. The American dollar is a debt note. Read it. Look at the American dollar. Take a magnifying glass. Read the fine print. It's a debt note. So you're paying debt with a debt? How does that make sense? So if you walk into the bank, and I'm going to tell you this works. You walk into the bank and you say you have two gold bars and you're willing to put them up for collateral. That bank is going to take your two gold bars and give you whatever you ask for. Because they rather have the gold than your credit or your actual physical debt note. Okay. I have cases against every member of Frank's organization. Frank's organization. Every single no guy. fucking has ever accomplished what the American mafia hasn't in a hundred years. And you would know that how. You take silver, take your jewelry, that's uh, 926, 925 silver, melt that shit down and watch what happens. People are going to talk to you different. You got gold in your possession, people are going to talk to you different. Once they test it and see it's gold, they're going to talk to you very different. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna keep that in mind. Uh, the, the gold and silver. I'm gonna definitely keep that in mind. Uh, gold and silver is worth more than anything you could just think of, brother. So, back to the credit report, man. What I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. Not, you nothing you can do about it. Or you're, you're gonna play the game or you're not. I mean, once you're in it, you're in it. Once you in the credit game, you're in it. Once you turn 18 and you're in the credit game, you see, when we grew up, remember, we used to get Sports Illustrated magazines, the Jet, you know, all these different magazines. We didn't know no better. We was ordering them shit so we could look at the pictures. But what happened? It affected our credit. When we first applied for our first credit at Sears, it affected that. Why? Because we didn't know no better. That, play, that, that penthouse magazine cost us our credit. Did we know that? No, because no one taught us not to do it. It's just like when the so kids go to. It's just like when the kids go to uh, go to college. You know how many how many credit applications that's all over they the all up. over the all over the billboards and everything when you go yeah. to college. Yeah, and if that think about it, you're in debt the moment you say you want to go. You're in a hundred thousand dollar debt automatically. If you don't work in the civil service uh, uh, government type job and you stay there 20 years because then the government pays it off for you. But you got to pay into it for them to pay it off. Did you know that? Sure didn't. Yeah, if you, if you work in government job or civil services, anything of that nature, after 20 years of being there, doctors, nurses, all that shit, they pay that shit off for you. You get the, all that shit to get clear, but you got to be there 20 years. You got to give them 20 years of your life for them to pay off your student loans. In the meanwhile, your regular kid who's a mechanic who went to Lincoln Tech or went to a college and now he's not in the profession that he went to the college for, he owes that $150,000, $200,000 student loan debt. And that's going to be on his debt forever. That's why I, I tell my son, he's this is his second year, I'm telling him, my grandson, always find the grants that you don't have to pay back. There's people, there's rich people out here who has to donate a certain amount of money per year. I'm not one of them, but there's rich people out there that has to donate. You know what I mean? And you get you write those grants and you petition for those grants. 
And if you get accepted, okay, that's a couple of dollars that you ain't got to pay back ever. And they didn't believe me. And just so happened, um, one of my kids' moms, actually, she she's she's like a professional with that shit. And she found grants for my two boys and they got them. And last year they didn't they end up the bill that was owed got paid. They're getting ready to go into school now this week, as of today, with a f- zero balance. Shut up, girl. They got a zero balance. So now they start a whole new uh, uh, semester, zero free. They got to go in, there, but now they have to start paying again. So now what they got to do is find more grants. You got to look for more grants. There's a way to beat the system, but you got to just, you got to research. So to answer your question about credit, credit is nothing but a debt is going to keep you locked into debt. That's the American way to keep you locked into debt. So you would never discover that your birth certificate is worth $50 million and your social security card is worth $50 million. Until you learn that, they're going to always keep you a slave. And on that note, man, I'll go ahead and let you go. Big cheese got it locked. Boy. Won't you let me out?